Hi, I'm Dina Mosser. I found that with practice, I use my bicycle more and more. I bicycle the meetings, I go grocery shopping, and just plain have fun with my dogs. And we hope after tonight's program, you'll want to be out there bicycling with us too. And uh, we thank you very much for joining us tonight for Try Bicycling. Let me introduce you to our guests. Jerry Ann Meyer, Ellen Fletcher, and John Brazil. And I want to start with you first, Jerry Ann. When is Bicycle to Work Day this year? So this year, Bike to Work Day is on Thursday, May 17th. And all nine counties in the Bay Area are participating on that day. Now, the purpose of Bike to Work Day is to encourage people to try bicycling for transportation. And what happens on Bike to Work Day? Well, it starts out in the morning with energizer stations that are set up along the commute routes. And these are places where bicyclists can stop in and they can get free refreshments, giveaways, bicycling information, and they can socialize with other people who are biking to work. And of course, they get encouragement by the volunteers who are staffing the energizer stations. So some of the giveaways include a Muzak bag similar to this that's full of all kinds of fun stuff that we get from our Bike to Work Day sponsors. It can be water bottles, uh, patch kits, tubes, bike maps, bike safety information, all kinds of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. So this year on Bike to Work Day, we're going to have nearly 50 Energizer stations in Santa Clara wow. County alone. And these will be open during the morning commute hours on Thursday, May 17th. The list of Silicon Valley or Santa Clara Energizer stations can be found off of the Silicon Valley Bike Coalition website, and it'll also list the times that they're open in the morning. Now, at three of these Energizer stations, we have something special going on. And what we're doing is Silicon Valley Bike Coalition is partnering with VTA to provide free all-day bike parking. And in addition to that, VTA will be giving away free transit passes. So all you have to do is show up at one of these Energizer stations, and that's either downtown Mountain View Transit Center, San Jose Deer Don, or the Milpitas Great Mall. Bring your bike between the hours of 6.30 and 9 a.m., and you can get a free VTA transit pass. Hmm. And if you want to leave your bike there and have it guarded all day while, you're, while you took transit to work, you, it'll be there, and you can come back at the end of the day and pick it up. So some other fun things that are going on is that bicyclists have the opportunity to be entered into a drawing to win some great prizes. And all you need to do is fill out a registration form off of the 511.org website or at an Energizer station on Bike to Work Day. And of course, the last thing we're doing, we couldn't end the day without some <laughs> fun doing event, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, is we're having an event that we're calling Bike Away From Work. And so this will be an evening event that where we'll have food, auction items, and of course, a chance to socialize with other people who are biking to work that day. That's great. Well, so in spite of all those fun things, why should someone really be considering bicycling to work? Well, it's interesting, Dina. In the Bay Area, there are over a million residents that live within five miles of where they work. Wow. And that's an ideal distance to bicycle to work, and especially in an area where we live, where the weather is great all year round. So encouraging people to bike to work allows us to combine, and they can also combine transit with bicycling to work if they want to take that as an option. It's part of our effort to continue to relieve, continuing to relieve traffic congestion and also to reduce vehicle emissions. So if we go back to those one million people, over one million people that live within five miles of where they work, if, we, if they all bike to work on bike to work day, then we would take away 60,000 vehicles off our road and we would reduce tailpipe emissions by 150,000 pounds. So that's wow. quite significant. Wow. So some other factors uh, as to why we want people to bike to work is that it eases the parking crunch. You can get 12 bikes into the space that one car takes. And we um, also want to encourage people to look at other ways that they can use their bike for transportation, um, such as running errands, going to school, things like that. So back to your original question about why bike to work. You know, in, the, in a day and time like we live in now, where we're concerned about the climate change, pollution, congestion, and all those things, the real question to ask is, why not bike to work? Well, that seems like a really good perspective. So in the Bay Area, how many people do participate in Bike to Work Day? Well, according to the US Census in the year 2000, over 36,000 people use their bicycle as their means of getting to work every day. Now on Bike to Work Day this year, we expect 50,000 to 100,000 people to bike to work across the Bay Area. So that's quite significant. 
And one of the things that we're doing, because we expect a lot of those bicyclists to be first-time commuters, is Silicon Valley Bike Coalition is offering free bike education classes during the month of May. Wow. And you can find the locations and the dates of those bike classes by going to the Silicon Valley Bike Coalition website, svbcbikes.org. Okay, that sounds like a really important website. There's a lot of information yeah, on that site. Yeah, a lot of I great websites. Tell. Well, um, it, you know, Bike to Work Day sounds really great. Sounds like people have a really good time, but what happens if it rains? You know, rain or shine, Bike to Work Day goes on, and we have a great time. So in the year 2005, it rained, but let's take a look at a video clip that showed what a great time we had. Okay. have it rain or shine it looks it's like it's time. a really good time okay so you've convinced me it's an important thing to do there are some really good reasons to do it how is a person supposed to figure out the best route to take from their home to work excellent question so there's some great free resources available I'm going to refer you again to my favorite website uh, svbcbikes.org where there are bike maps such as these um, there are in online versions of the county and the cities in the in the county and you can also get hard copies of these there's information about that on the website Great. something else you can do is you can send an email to our svbc bikes alias people are always very very helpful with routing information and there's a bike buddy program that you can subscri subscribe to and that will hook up a less experienced bike commuter with somebody who is more experienced and they'll help you with various tips and hints and routing information and even ride with you to work. No, yeah, that sounds like really good support. Okay, so Ellen, um, I want to talk to you about bicycle boulevards and you're just the perfect person to ask <laughs> because you happen to have the best bicycle boulevard in America named after you, the Ellen Fletcher Bicycle Boulevard and on many maps it's called the, the Bryant Street Bicycle Boulevard. Can you tell us um, what's the idea behind a bike boulevard? Well, we all know that motorists have their fast throughways with the, the very few lights and, and stop signs. And they, in our area, they have Alma Street, they can go fast, and they uh, have uh, 101 freeway. And so the Br Bryan Street Bicycle Boulevard is meant to mimic those types of routes where there are minimum stops and bicyclists can really make headway. Okay, and what are the features of a bike boulevard? Well, we have some uh, uh, traffic circles. Uh, there's one of the traffic, uh, I'm sorry, ba uh, barriers to prevent cars from going through to keep the volume of uh, motorists down. And then we have, uh, oh, the bicycle bridges, that's right. Yeah. There's a creek where uh, the motorists cannot go through, but we have a bicycle bridge on the right there and a pedestrian bridge on the left. Okay. And then we have the, uh, the traffic circle, which slows the cars down and really uh, acts as a deterrent to using it as a through street. And then at a major intersection at, at uh, Embarcadero Road, we have uh, the motorists are not allowed to go straight through or make left turns if they're on Bryant. Um, they have to turn right onto Embarcadero from either direction. And that really, really keeps the uh, motorist, motor traffic down. Okay, great. So you refer to a bicycle boulevard as a bike throughway. Why don't you tell us what you mean by that? Well, uh, the main feature of the Bicycle Boulevard really is to um, allow bicyclists to go without stopping very often because uh, on neighborhood streets, especially around here, we have a lot of stop signs. Mm -hmm. So on the Bicycle Boulevard, we have the stop signs on the cross streets, uh, 
instead of on the bicycle boulevard. So the cars have to stop at the bikes don't. Exactly. Ah, okay, right. that's good. So how does one get on to the bicycle boulevard? Well, we can see on the map here that there are very many accesses to the bicycle boulevard. And even all the way through town here on the southern end, there are a couple of bicycle bridges um, across the creeks into, uh, towards Mountain View, very close to Mountain View. And then at the northern end, we have uh, some bicycle bridges over here that go into Menlo Park. So uh, again, the motorists can't get through there, but the bicyclists can. And then uh, in the down Palo Alto downtown area on Homer Avenue, we have an undercrossing under the tracks, which allows the bicyclists to access uh, the other side of the tracks. And we have a, uh, a, a new bike trail. We call it the Caltrain Bike Trail because it's right by the Caltrain tracks. And that goes, um, if, if you, uh, it, it hooks up to uh, a bicycle path that takes you either to uh, Quarry Road where you can cross El Camino it's to the Camino. Stanford Shopping Center or go all the way through El Camino Park on the path to Sand Hill Road. And then there's another bridge if you keep going down past the shopping center, which is on this side, there's another bicycle bridge into Menlo Park from there. So there are very many access uh, points to uh, not only from the inside of Palo Alto, but to connecting cities. Yeah, it sounds like it's a pretty popular route. Has it uh, been well received by both novice and experienced bicyclists? Oh, it's, it's really become a very popular bicycle route. And, uh, the novices like it because of the very low traffic volumes and the fast bicycle riders, they just love it because there are so few stops. Okay, that's great, that's great. <laughs> well, you know, there are other bicycle pathways in the, in the near area that are very good and, and one of them is Stevens Creek Trail. And we have a video of that trail so that we can see what it's like. Wow, that's a, that's a really a great trail. John, maybe you'll tell us something about that trail. First of all, how did the idea for this trail get started? Good question. Well, actually, there are records as far back as 1961 of uh, cities and government agencies studying this concept. The County of Santa Clara in 1961 conducted a very brief and simple concept of developing a trail there. It lay dormant for a while, and then the city of Mountain View in the early 90s decided, this sounds like a good concept, we'd like to pursue it. And in, at that same time, in 1992, a nonprofit organization called the Friends of Stevens Creek Trail was organized to help the city develop the trail and the concept. So the concept was really to connect the bay down by Shoreline Park and Shoreline Amphitheater with the mountains along the Stevens Creek itself, which the headwaters are up in the Santa Cruz Mountains. So at the current time, a lot of progress has been made, and I'd be happy to tell you more about what's going on with current segments and what's constructed in... Well, why don't, you, why don't you show us what segments are open to the public right now? Sure. So we have a map here. And currently, 
There, the segment beginning at the bay is open and available to the public use all the way nearly to the El Camino Real. And the, the current terminus is at Yuba Drive just north of El Camino Real. So it's really quite handy because it brings you from the bay, it helps you cross on a bicycle or on foot or on skates. Some, some things that are often barriers to bicyclists or pedestrians, which are things like Highway 101, the trail goes under there. And then it continues across Central Expressway where there are railroad tracks, also a challenge for bicyclists and pedestrians. And it continues currently nearly to El Camino, as I mentioned. And it provides connections to schools and parks. And it really is great for commuters, uh, for kids, safe routes to schools, for people who want to recreate. And so it's uh, really, really been quite successful in Mountain View. And so are actually steps to expand it. And I'd be happy to talk about Oh, yeah. Please tell us. What are the future plans? So you'll notice the map only goes to Mountain View, but there are plans to continue it beyond. Currently, Mountain View has approved uh, a construction contract to extend the trail under El Camino Real to the, the southern side of El Camino Real. And Mountain View has conceptual designs to extend it all the way to Mountain View High School, which will be uh, great because another connection for folks going to school. And additionally, other cities are studying and actually building tr segments of trail because the creek itself runs through four cities, Mountain View, Los Altos, Sunnyvale, and Cupertino. Cupertino has uh, recently awarded a contract to build a segment between Stevens Creek Boulevard and McClellan Ranch. That'll be a great facility going through uh, parks and again providing great access. Los Altos has a feasibility study underway to, uh, to build a, a section in the part of the creek that runs in their neighborhood. That will probably be on street, It'll still be a great resource. And Sunnyvale has informal uh, intentions but nothing formalized yet. Wow, that's pretty impressive. So. We've learned about what Bike to Work Day is. We've been given some great reasons for why we should be interested in bicycling to work. We've learned about the Ellen Fletcher Bicycle <laughs> Boulevard in, in uh, Palo Alto. And now we've, you know, the Stevens Creek Trail. It's really pretty impressive. It'll be nice when it it's is. completed. Oh, it'll be fantastic. And there are a few other resources available. Uh, the nonprofit organization Friends of Stevens Creek Trail can be found on the web at stevenscreektrail.org and the cities of Mountain View, Sunnyvale, not so much Sunnyvale, but Cupertino and Los Altos all have processes in place. So. Okay, that's great. All right, so I'm sitting at home and I've got all this information and I'm interested, I want a bike. I should be able to bike, but that bicycle has been in my garage for two years. Um, Anybody got any tips for how we can get really get ready to get out there? Well, I hear you. There are a lot of us out there like that who've let our, our bikes collect a little dust. So I'd be happy to provide some tips and uh, we can head on over here. Oh, great. Let's do that. Wow. You've got a lot of gear here. Do I really need all of this and to uh, be able to bike to work? Well, there are all kinds of gear options, but really the only two things that are critical are a bike that works and a helmet. And you can see Dina's fabulous bike here and helmet. And if you're taking your bike out of the garage or you've had it in storage for a while, it's good to make sure that the basic things work, like test the brakes, make sure you have air in the tires. And you don't need to be an expert on any of that. Don't need to feel like you need to do all your repairs. If something's not working, take it to a bike shop. But you want to make sure you have those basics, a working bike, the brakes are okay, and a helmet that fits. And then there are all kinds of other options that you may or may not want to take with you. Your bike is a nice example. We see you've got baskets to take groceries or haul other packages. You've got a nice bell on the handlebars. Of course, you have your reflectors back here, nice comfy seat. A few other things, though, that might be helpful, especially if you're going to a place where you may not uh, be able to take your bike inside with you, is a nice secure bicycle lock. Wow. There are lots of different brands. This style is generally considered the most secure. It's called uh, a U-lock, is that what we call it? Yes. And this is what type of recommend, the thicker the better. It's a little heavy, but you can carry it in your bag. Another option is a cable that you can attach to this type of lock, but a lock is important for security in, uh, in whenever you're parking your bike. Now we mentioned helmets, there are all kinds of options. One thing that's important to note about a helmet that there sometimes there are misunderstandings about is how you should position the helmet on your head. Now you'll see I have it relatively level, not back like this. The main, the most frequent uh, occurrence for a crash for a head injury is on the front of the head, so you want to make sure your, your helmet is level. And then secondly, you want to make sure it's snug. Oftentimes the strap is too loose, particularly with kids. So 
Get a helmet that fits, have somebody in a bike shop help you fit it. Make sure it's forward on your head, at least level, and not back, and then snug in the strap. Other options are things like lights, which of course are not only required at night, but are, are uh, improve your safety. All kinds of lights, ones like this that hook on the back of your helmet or the back of your, back of your bike. Um, other options that you may find helpful but certainly don't need are gloves. If you're riding a longer distance, you may find it more comfortable. Um, some people that ride long distances are more serious by special shoes that they actually clip into the pedal. They're called clipless, ironically, but they clip into the pedal. Uh, again, not required. Other things, uh, some people use straps around their pant legs so that their pant cuffs don't get caught in, in uh, their chain. If your bike doesn't have a chain guard, these are helpful. And not only do they keep your pants up, but they're reflective, so they provide a little increased safety. I like to roll my pants up. It just seems easier. Yeah, then you don't have to carry around a, a strap or anything. Right. It's one less thing to need to remember, right? right? So that's right. great. Another thing I encourage folks to get, but not required, is a basic patch kit, because that's probably the only single um, thing that might happen, malfunction, that might happen to you that's, that's not infrequent. So you can buy a little mini pump like this and a little pack to carry a patch kit and uh, a repair mm -hmm. tire levers, which we won't go into the details of that, but it's probably an important thing to have. Lights, real quickly, you might, uh, again, if you're riding at night, there are inexpensive lights, ones that don't shine too brightly, and then there are more expensive ones you can see shine really brightly. Uh, those are good to have, good options. Water bottle for water, nice uh, bright jacket so traffic sees you. Those are some of the options that you might want yeah, to take. That's great, that's really helpful. So um, we all want to be safe, and you've talked about gear that helps make us safe, but what about rules of the road? What things do people need to know? Well, it's interesting. The, the simplest way to think of it is really the rules that apply to us as we drive our cars are pretty much the same rules that apply to us when we ride our bikes, which are we want to ride on the right side of the road. So as bicyclists, we ride with traffic, not against. And a lot of us, people, some of us that are older might remember informally being told ride against traffic because you'll be more visible. Right. That's false. It's been proven in safety studies. You, you want to ride with traffic, not only because it's safer, but because it's the law. So that's kind of one of the basic rules. And again, if you're making turns, uh, you want to follow all the rules of the road about uh, signals and stop signs and things of that nature. So let's see, what else can I tell you about that? Yeah, essentially, it's important to heed stop signs and stop lights. You know, we as bicyclists oftentimes think, oh, we're getting all this energy up to move. I don't want to have to stop because it'll take me more energy to get so going. So it's a little bit like driving. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's definitely Stop it. when you're supposed to stop and use turn signals. And what, well, speaking of turn signals, what, what kind of skills, what sort of riding skills do, does someone need to know about? That's a good question. And actually, I'm wondering if Jerry Ann can come over and help me with this. Hmm. So there are really two basic skills that are critical to basic bicycling. Anybody can learn them. They're real easy. I'm going to just pull the, the back wheel over a little, Jerry Ann. Perfect. You're fine. And these two basic skills are, will get you by. If you can practice these and, and get good at them, you'll be fine. The first one is learning how to arm signal. You might remember some of you folks who've driven older cars that didn't have signals. Using your arm to signal, there's the, the left signal, which is out like that. There's the right signal, which is two different ways you can do it, like that, or you can also make a right signal like that. Either way is legal. Then there's a signal that says, I'm slowing down and going to come to a stop. So that's an important signal, too. So these are really important to learn so you can let other people on the road know what your intentions are to improve your safety. The second key skill is, is what we call a shoulder check, which is learning to look over your left shoulder and back at traffic so you can see what's approaching and whether it's safe. Perhaps you want to make a left turn. So this is something you should also practice on your bike. Try to ride in a straight line and look over your left shoulder without turning the wheel. When you get really good at all these skills, you might combine both of them. And that's when you become really experienced. jerry how about that? And continue riding in a straight line. So those are some of the basic key skills. If you can do that, you're great. Get your helmet, your bike, these basic skills, you're set. OK. Thanks, jerry <laughs> That is really very helpful. So that's a lot of information. Someone still is uncomfortable. They're looking for more help. What can they do? There are all types of resources out there. As Jerry Ann mentioned, the local Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition is actually a great resource at svbcbikes.org. And also a great opportunity to practice these skills, as Jerry Ann mentioned, is Bike to Work Day on May 17th. So that's a, a great resource as well. Also, there are instructors who are certified to teach bike safety classes. 
that are all over the country, all over the state, and all over our region here. And they teach what are called uh, bike ed classes. And that's a great way to learn a little bit more. You can find information about that also on the Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition website. Wow. This has just really been great. I, come on over, Ellen. I want to thank um, all of you for being here. That all of you who are, who are watching should know that bicyclists are very enthusiastic about bicycling and, and love to share their enthusiasm and knowledge with you. So don't hesitate to ask someone you know uh, who bicycles for help. Um, so uh, if you need more information, svbcbikes.org. Right. We encourage comments and suggestions. And those can be sent to Try Bicycling, the name of the show, Try Bicycling at svbcbikes.org, right? Right. And um, well, Ellen, you're a great role, you're a great role, role model for all of us. You've been riding for how many years now? <laughs> oh, I can't remember. <laughs> a long time. Yeah. Maybe six years. Ellen bicycles More than six everywhere. Years. It's really very yeah. impressive, and she's done a lot to make sure that bicycling is easier and better for us than Thank it you. would have been without you. So we Thank do you. appreciate that. Yeah, and also, Dina, we've appreciated all you've done in, in Palo Alto to encourage folks to ride and improve uh, bicycling facilities in Palo Alto. So well, thank you. Thank you. And I, you know, I think everyone should just be really confident. May 17th, May 17th, Day. Thursday, May 17th. There's a lot of information. There's free tickets from VTA, which is really very if cool. If you go to one of the three Energizer stations, okay. and you can find those Energizer station locations, again, off the Silicon Valley Bike Coalition website, right. and it lists the times and where they are. Okay, so Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition has a world of uh, information for you, and there's lots of bicyclists out there, so we encourage you all to try bicycling have a good time, and we really hope that we see you out on the road on May 17th, Bike to Work Day. Thanks so much for joining us. So.